After several months of collecting the beefiest and juiciest spiral drill shavings from the drill press, we're ready to roll on a new canister Damascus project. Stainless steel, tool steel 5160 shavings have all been discarded and what's left are 10 series 15 and 20 files, iron, and bits from various Damascus projects. In canister number one, we're going to lay the spirals out lengthwise in an effort to expose as long a continuous piece as possible in the final etch. Then we'll put this solid piece of 1070 steel in the canister with spirals and powdered steel on either side, assuring that I'll have a solid piece of quality steel in the middle where the edge of the knife would originate. But I have to abandon this as my canister really isn't wide enough and I didn't think I'd be able to fit enough spirals in it along with a solid piece of steel to make a good pattern. So we're going to go with just the powdered steel and spirals. I already have concerns about gaps and voids though in air pockets as this doesn't really seem to pack or settle very well. I'll still be able to take the resulting billet here and forge weld it to either side of a piece of solid steel if I so desire in the future, but accomplishing all this in a single step inside this canister just isn't going to work. Canister number two, we're using the cram method, where we shove as many of the spirals and as much powder into a canister while on end. I don't expect to see any recognizable spirals in the final piece, but I think there's a much greater chance of getting a better piece of steel with fewer pockets and voids in it. We're going to weld these babies shut and we're ready to go. We'll start with canister number one. This has the spirals laying on end. As you can see, this one compresses quite easily under the hammer and I'm a bit concerned that there's a lot of pockets and, and extra air in there. Maybe not enough powder to make enough steel here for a knife. So we'll just have to see how this goes. That's getting awfully thin. Since the seams split open, I'm adding some flux to make sure that I don't have any scale building up inside the steel where we, where we want the forge welding to happen. So after grinding, it looks like we may be alright. I'm going to cut this billet in half and forge weld it back on itself. There's a little pocket there, a little crack that, I'm, that I've ground out, but I don't think that's going to make a huge difference. I've done some quick and dirty grinding and then etched the blade for a preview. There's only really three visible drill shavings and only one is recognizable as a spiral. 
That appearance might change for better or worse slightly with more grinding, but in any case, I think the final effect's not going to be desirable. So I've set this knife aside for now, and we'll move on to canister 2. This is much more solid under the hammer. There's more drill shavings than in canister 1 and better packing with the powder, so I'm hopeful that we'll get something uh, a little better to work with here and that we'll still have an interesting pattern. So you can see it is sort of teed out. So I ground off those edges, which are just mild steel, and then we'll hammer it back a, a little bit round and then flatten it some more. The ends are cut off the billet and I've etched it to assess how much grinding is gonna be needed to remove the mild steel casing, which we really don't want in the final product. I'm going to grind and etch and repeat until the mild steel has been removed from one side and then fold that side over on itself. I'll keep the mild steel canister on the outside of the billet for now as it's just going to scale up and, and fall off and I don't mind if that happens to the mild steel. I did cut off a piece, a smaller length at the tip, which didn't look very good for knife making. It had these big gaps in it, but I might be able to use this later for some guard material or a spacer in the handle. Here you see me struggling with the idea of whether or not I'm going to forge weld this to the exterior of another piece of solid steel and sort of a sand mai or sandwich type construction or whether or not just to cut this in half and fold it on itself and uh, proceed from there and that's ultimately what I decided to do. I'm going to forego a sandwich technique here. I think this is pretty solid and I'm hopeful that it'll make a good knife uh, edge even on its own. Now the forge welding is done, we're going to hammer out the shape of a knife like we did with canister number one. Got enough steel that this will end up being a slightly larger knife, which is cool. It's still on the small side, but bigger than canister one, so. Trying to isolate a tang area here and not doing a very good job to be honest. This is not my uh, finest moment.
Now I'm going to grind it flat and then define the tang a little better on the grinder as I did such a bad job hammering it out. Then it will be on to the heat treat oven for some normalization cycles. Knife's wrapped in a steel pouch to keep as much oxidation from happening while it's in the heat treat oven. It's not completely airtight, but it's airtight enough that we'll minimize any scaling while it's going through its normalization cycles. So after the heat cycling, I'm going to file in some relief for the guard area and then we'll go to harden it. It didn't really harden well in Parks 50 fast oil so I've done a three to four second water quench followed by moving it quickly into the oil uh, as soon as the edge area is gray and cooled. I guess that's sort of an interrupted quench and this worked quite a bit better. After tempering, I'm going to grind the knife, sand it, and then we'll set it aside while we work on a nickel silver guard. I've never done any file work on a guard before. I've done it on the spine of a knife and it's not too difficult. But even the simplest pattern going around this uh, turn or this edge was pretty difficult. This thing got a little bit wonky so I had to go back and continually adjust the sizes and things like that. It's a little bit of a challenge. I was surprised. Etching the blade is going to reveal a pretty cool little pattern. It's tight and fine and really devoid of any spirals, but I think it's cool nonetheless. We'll polish it up a bit and get a better look at it here in a minute. Let's go back to our piece of billet that we cut off and flatten it out. We'll use it for some spacer just under our guard. Now normally most people would drill a couple pinholes on either side of the tang hole area through the guard, the handle material, and any other spacer materials that you're going to use such that the pins can be used to hold them all together in a constant orientation while the shaping is going on. I've tried that several times now with minimal success. Um, it has a lot of benefits. You can remove pieces and fit things back together and make sure the fit up is good and things like that. But I, I just have not had much luck with my drill press and getting holes that are very tight and holds everything together in a very constant way. So I'm just going to go with the old butt clench method where I glue it up, grind the handle as one piece and hope for no mistakes and a solid fit up with a guard which has already been attached to the handle at this point. Everything goes pretty well. But as I go to tape up the wood and apply etchant to our ring to reveal any pattern, I notice a split in the steel. So I have to trash the entire handle and start over. One reason why pinning your handles while you're shaping them is a good idea. In that case, you could just throw out the bum piece instead of the entire handle. So here it is made with two rings of mild steel just under the guard area. And um, it's been glued up at this point and I'm drilling a handle pinhole. 
Next, the Boda Arc handle material is going to be shaped on the belt sander and then sanded to 800 grit. If I do this again, I think I'll only use 15 and 20 steel shavings, which really differentiate themselves in an etch from high carbon steel a little better. And I think I would try laying them out lengthwise again, like in the first canister, only make it a thicker piece that'll hold more shavings and powder. By the way, that's not really a crack running along the edge on the left side of the blade. Best I can tell, that's a drill shaving. At any rate, what do you guys think of the pattern? Perhaps it's worth uh, round two at some point. Let me know what's on your mind and what you think in the comment section below. Well, that's all I got. You guys stay awesome and I'll see you next time. If you're into what happens here, consider heading over to Patreon and helping out the channel. There's some freebies there for different levels of support, including some more videos. So take a peek.